Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Wednesday night's uh, Sip and Painting. I'm uh, Cipriano Ortega, and thanks to Longmont Museum, this is the month of painting with me, Cipriano Ortega. And tonight we're going to have a very fun painting to finalize all this month of painting, a beautiful spring picture here with all these flowers. And you'll take note, let's talk about the composition before we get into materials here. We have a black background. Our primary colors are going to be red, blue, yellow, green, and a different assortment of different shades of those. And we'll get into the techniques. And if you've been watching for the last couple Wednesdays I've been doing this, you'll know a few tricks. But if this is your first time here, welcome. And we'll get started on talking about the materials. First and foremost, like I said, we have the colors, which are going to be acrylics. We have black, red, blue, green, and yellow. And tonight, instead of my glass palette, I have a palette paper, which just is like a bunch of papers with a wax, basically wax paper to use for my palette, but you can obviously use any sort of uh, piece of paper or paper plate or etc. I have a paper towel, rolls of paper towel, I'm going to scoot this over a bit, and of course my white gesso or white paint, that's very important for this tonight. A paint knife just to get this paint out of this bucket, that's not necessary for you. My water container, water bottle for drinking, and my favorite thing, we have our blow dryer tonight, obviously to aid our speeding along with our drying process for tonight. So yes, so basically what I like to start off is talking about how we're going to do this. And so we're going to start off by painting the entire canvas black first. And this is already a pre-gessoed canvas, so there's already white acrylic paint on here which will make it easier for this black to transfer onto here, the black paint. And after that, we're going to work from dark to light. So like I say, most of the time, the number one rule about painting is that we work from dark to light. So we're going to start laying down the flowers first, probably the big one, and these two little ones after here, the red ones, with a dark red first, moving up to a lighter shade, then to the green, the blue flowers, and then the yellow stems and the green as well too. And obviously I'll talk about all that in great detail in a moment here. And let's talk about the brushes we'll be using tonight. We have the big brush, we have the medium brush, and the small brush. And these two brushes are going to be my chisel brushes, and the reason why they're called chisel brushes is they're flat on both sides. And my fine point brush is not flat. It's just a nice fine tip for a little bit more detail work with our stems and our smaller flowers that we'll be painting tonight. So the next step here is I'm going to take out my black acrylic. I'm going to scoot this over so you all can see a bit. Let me scoot this back. All these camera things. There we go. So I'm going to take my black acrylic here, put a good amount of this on my palette paper. Then I'm going to take my big, my biggest brush, my chisel brush, as you can see here. And if you don't have a big chisel brush, the medium one will do just fine, but it's the bigger the better because for this we want to cover the most surface area in the most efficient manner possible. So we're just going to first take some of our pure water and we're just going to apply just our pure water from our container onto our canvas. This will help speed along the process of moving that black paint in a much easier fashion if we were just to apply it directly onto a dry canvas. This is something I learned through the years of teaching these kind of tutorials is this is the best way to do so. And we'll also get the edges of the canvas as well too and that's obviously pretty straightforward. <coughs> so make sure it's pretty pretty good and wet once you feel that's sufficient. Just take your black paint, a good amount, good hefty amount of black paint on there, and just start spreading that around. We're going to go in a horizontal direction. If you want to go vertical, you're more than welcome to, but I think for this composition, moving in a horizontal direction is the most logical approach for this composition. But it is your painting, so it is your to your discretion. But that is my choice for the evening. It's definitely summertime. I can still see outside at 
I am ready for summer. I don't know about everybody else. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask them. There is a 30-second delay, so if I'm not ignoring you. I just It takes a minute, about half, 30 seconds, half a minute, for your questions to be seen or your comments to me. So if there's anything that doesn't make sense, do feel free. I know I'm just a person in a box, but I definitely can answer these questions. And I... Look forward to that, or your comments as well, too. A lot of you have been very sweet and said you are very much enjoying these Wednesdays. And I do believe, hopefully, Longmont will rehire me. I do believe that is going to happen in the fall, but knock on wood, we shall see. I do very much miss in-person painting as well, too, because then I could see all your lovely faces and give you hands-on direction as well too. So the first layer you may notice is a bit light since of course it is our first coat of paint but it will thicken once we blow dry this in a second here and since it's so thin it'll dry pretty quickly so put your black brush your black coated brush with paint into your container and blow dry this if you don't have a blow dryer I'll show you the quick quickest way without electricity just simply hold it up and fan it like so but for me, I prefer electricity, so I'm going to blow dry this. Now, this doesn't need to be completely dry, but it has to be somewhat tacky. So, in terms of the surface itself, I mean. So, we're not, we don't need to dry off our brush nor clean it since we're going right back to our black. So, just continue that process again. Our second coat, it usually takes about two coats. If you're very insistent on it being pure black, then it may take a third coat, but it, the second coat typically gives it, a, it, gives it the appearance that is desired. <coughs> but if you joined us last week, we did a Starry Starry Night by Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, Tomato Tomato, but um, it was quite challenging. It's very refreshing to work on something that is a bit more simple. Not that I don't relish the fact that it is nice to have challenging paintings to try to reproduce or capture that essence, but this is much more <laughs> relaxing in the sense of we're just painting some happy little flowers. It is springtime after all, and what better way to conclude our painting time together than by representing what we see in a beautiful Colorado and all around the world, really. But I very much like flowers and painting flowers. I need some more black here, so I'm going to put some more black. Like I said, these are acrylic paints. If you want to wear an apron, do so, but I choose to rebel and never really ever paint an apron. It just feels confining to me, so I don't know why. It's not a matter of fact of how it looks. It just, I don't know, I feel confined in an apron, so I want to liberate myself. And just simply, if I get paint on my clothes, and well, I am an artist, so it just adds to my characterization of how I uh, appear in the world. So as you can see, this second coat is indeed working very efficiently by coating this entirely black. Now do take note, black and white are not colors per se. They are tinting agents. So they're very powerful. Black being the most powerful, white being the second to black in the sense that it lightens and changes colors. And black obviously darkens things and highlights things. So black is very powerful. <coughs> Take this here. And we'll blow dry this in a moment, but now we're going to address the edges of our canvas. Now, if you don't want to paint the edges and you like kind of that brushy look 
on the sides of your canvas and go ahead and leave them. But if you don't like that and you want it to look more quote unquote professional, then do indeed please paint your sides of your canvas if you wish to do so. So just a simple thing, take some more black and paint these edges. We'll blow dry all these edges except for one that we have to put a coat again after we blow dry because we can't coat all four sides otherwise it's going to get all over the easel. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera there, but not much action. Just painting this sides black. As you can see, I'm lifting that up. This side is still white since I want to put that on the easel itself. Good catch. I would have dropped that and embarrassed myself. But don't speak too soon. So here's this other side here of our canvas. And of course, you can frame this if you're so... And if you feel to do so, you obviously can, but most most of these, I think, look fine unframed. I think a gold frame would look kind of nice on this, something kind of gaudy in the sense of something that bold, because I think black and gold obviously complement each other quite well. All right, so there we are with the two coats of paint and our edges painted, except for one, which we'll do in a moment. I'm going to blow dry this. And another note here, do make sure that this is completely dry because we're going to start putting the flowers here in a moment. Now acrylic is a type of plastic so it dries fairly quickly and it is water soluble when it's wet. Once it dries it obviously becomes waterproof since it is a type of plastic. So I'm going to take my brush, paint this last side here. And this is all that we'll be using the black for in this piece for the duration of it since the rest of it isn't uh, outlined after this. Of course you can outline it if you wish. So finish and paint that last edge there black then finish blow drying and then we'll move on to the flowers here in a moment.
I think that should just about do it. So now that's completely dry and completely black. So now think of the next step is basically laying down our preliminary ideas of where we want this. So I'm going to start with the biggest object being our largest flower in the composition. And I'm going to take my medium chisel brush, just like so. And I'm going to take my pure red out of my container here and put it on my palette. We're just going to use the pure red first to lay out all these these three biggest flowers here that are red. And we'll obviously work, work from dark red to light red as we proceed, but to lay it down, I just want to find the general position of the biggest one. So I'm just going to put kind of a dot to where I want to put that one, as you can see, and then a third dot for the base of the other one, or a second dot, and a third dot here in the corner for this one. So from that point, we're just going to go back to our kindergarten selves and just think about these shapes as triangles and we're just going to draw some triangle shapes here and we'll get more into the fine detail here in a moment but just paint this big flower here in the center by using that pure red just getting those edges and it's about a one, two, about a nine or ten sided flower in terms of the petals. And these ones just have this one here has just three. So it's barely budding open. And we'll just think of kind of a, a upside down U shape here. The initial shape here, see? Nice and simple. And we'll get there and work at the petals a bit more. Like I said, I'm just doing the line so I can see where I'm laying this out before I commit to more permanent shapes. This one is also kind of an upside down, more of a bell shape. And then we'll add another petal there. This one tapers off the edge of the canvas as well. So take a look there. That is the general shapes that we'll be doing here for these ones first. And I made this one, I think, a little bit smaller, which is fine. But you can, I can, I think, in fact, I'll go back on the first one we did, and again, that's why we didn't. I didn't commit completely to the first shapes itself. So I'm using the flat edge of the brush to start painting these petals. See, and just think rounded shape of the petals. Like I said, just using that flat side of the brush and meeting it more of a fine tip there. And don't worry about the center of this because we're gonna that's a different color. That'll be a light blue. That'll be one of the last steps for this. So yeah, load up your brush with a good amount of red. That pure dark red. And this is a different type of red than the one above. This is more of an orangey, more of a poppy color red, which is fine by me because I do like poppies. Not sure what kind of flower these flowers these are. I don't even know if they're they exist in real life, but if anybody recognizes the shapes of them, feel free to mention it in the chat. I'm not a botanist. I wish I was sometimes. And then again here, filling in this shape, and we'll make the details of those a bit more obvious as we proceed here. So this one, I'm just emphasizing that U shape. Just like so. So we'll let these dry for a bit, just for a moment here, and we're going to move on to our second biggest flowers, which are these blue ones. So let's rinse out this brush that we just used for red. And I'm going to put some blue, pure blue, on my palette here. Just like so. I'm going to rinse this out. Do make sure it is rinsed out completely before you move on to applying the blue onto it, and red is a very potent color, so it may take a little bit of elbow grease to clean that off. So do make sure it's a bit, it's dried off and clean. Take your pure blue, and we're again, we're using our same size brush, our medium chisel size brush, loading our brush up with pure blue. And again, these are just 
U shapes. This one's an upside down shape. U and these ones are U shapes, kind of off kilter, more so to the right hand side. So again, just getting in there, painting that U shape, and I'll bring it up to the camera here in a moment. Second U shape. This is kind of a flower arrangement. I don't know if they're really necessarily planted to anything. And then again, this is an upside down shape U or a sad face, just like so. Very simple shapes first before we commit to those details. So once again, we're going to go back and we're going to fill these in with our pure dark blue. And just think flower petals when you're applying this on. So still seeing some of that black background exposed, just like so. And like I said, we'll come back to these and we will make them much lighter and much more lively here in a second. So the next step here is we're going to lay down these little smaller, and these have four petals each one. And I'll show you here. As you can see, these ones here kind of look more like cherry blossoms, if you ask me. So we're going to use our smallest brush, our smallest here, the fine point. And I need some more red on my palette. And again, we're going to lay down with our pure red first, just to get all these shapes distinguished. And we'll do this with the green for the leaves and the yellow as well, too, in a moment. But I'm just going to pick, there's a bunch of three of them here. And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. Kind of like little starbursts as well, too. So, and try not to put them in a row unless you want to, but. These are kind of spread out, like I said, four little dashes of paint just to identify that these indeed are abstract interpretations of flowers. Like I said, there's a bunch of three of them here. There's a bunch of one, two, five here in the lower right hand corner. can make them as big or as small as you want, but these are the smallest things in terms of our flowers on the canvas here. Just like so. See, there we are general shapes and then again we have this bunch of blue ones that are the same shape as the one that we just did so let's rinse out our brush and take up our pure blue here and we'll do this bunch of five blue cherry blossom shapes in our left upper corner here upper left corner And never you fret, we're going to make these a lot lighter, but I like to see where I'm putting them down first. Just to get an idea. One more, I think, here. There we go. See, just like so. And the other ones that we worked on should be generally dry, but we're going to work in these back with our white anyway. So, But I think first, let's take up our medium-sized chisel brush, and let's work back in these bigger red ones to get a bit more of a darker red in there. So rinse off your medium chisel brush, make sure it's dry, pick up some of that pure red again, and let's go back in again with our pure red and even commit more to those petal shapes with our pure red fur. See how much that pops out now that we have a first coat of red on it? That is indeed the goal for now. We'll work into it again here. And make sure that your flower petals kind of come to a nice fine tip. As you can see, I also kind of see this center one as a lily. We can let some of that black peek through still, because I do like the way that looks. However, I think we definitely want to 
and that center there, just get painterly, and you can swish that around there. And we'll define it even more here in a moment. Let's go back down to these other ones that are not blossomed all the way. Get some of that red. See, that just really makes it pop there. Just like so. Really low. I'm really loading up my brush, really applying it pretty thick, so I can get that very vibrant, pure red starting to pop out. Okay. Let's do the same for the blue flowers up on t top here. Let's go back to some of our pure blue. Rinse out this same chisel brush. It's dry. Get some of that blue. Let's work that back in there. See, we can let that black still puck, pop through, peek through here. There we are. This one's the upside down one. So as you can see, it's slowly starting to come to life even more, just like Mother Nature herself. So we're going to get our small brush work into these red and blue ones again, just like we did a minute, minute ago with these bigger ones. I'm going to take my red and lay them down even more committed to that shape. And you don't have to stick to the line that you initially laid down there. You can make them pop out even more now that we've had them established. So I'm following that general area, but not completely. Now to these smaller blue ones. Like I said, we're slowly working from dark to light. These are already starting to pop out more lighter. All right, now let's rinse out our small brush, a fine tip brush here, and we are going to pour out some of our green from our green container of paint here, just our pure green. And just like we just did for all these flowers, we're going to start laying down the stems that they don't necessarily touch. If you can take a look, they're just to indicate where these green parts of the plant are on or near these flowers. So again, take up your pure green, get a nice point on your fine point brush. And I'm going to start just with this one here, with these two leaf shapes. There are just two lines so far. We're just going to do the lines We'll work in that a bit more than this one over here. Kind of a squiggly line. And then we'll do the one over here, which kind of reaches over and around, goes off the edge of the canvas. These two lines here. And I'm making them a bit thicker because I think they look more interesting that way. And then we'll do a leaf that's peeking through here. This one here. And this one is a leaf shape. So we're just going to do kind of an open V. And I'll bring this up to the canvas or to the camera in a minute here. And then we'll do this shape here, which is this green shape right there. And I'm just going to do the lines first. And if you see that there is areas to improve upon the shapes of the, or move the green stems to where they move in a direction that makes more sense, do feel free to do so. You don't need to stick exactly to this method here. Painting is interpretation. We can have fun with it. All right, so like I said, here we go. You can see that green doesn't really pick up very well on the camera here, but we will go back into that with a lighter yellow and a lighter green in a moment here. But take a look at the top example, which is the original, if you are getting lost or confused.
All right, now let's work on our red flowers. Let's put this back in the water container. Take your medium chisel brush, clean that off. Now we're going to get out our white. And I have gesso here, but it's the same. It's a bit thicker version of white acrylic paint. It is acrylic paint, but it is a thicker version of white. So I'm going to take uh, some of my white, some of my red here. And I'm just going to load up more white than red on my brush. And I'm going to start addressing these petals on my biggest brush, or my biggest flower right here. Just go back in there and you'll mix it slowly onto the canvas itself. You can already see how much this white adds some dimension to these petals. We're just doing the edges for now. You'll see how much more painterly it starts to look when that white is peeking through. Just like so. Yep, you can definitely see that on camera, which is good. Take some of your pure red as well, too. Go back and forth. You can always make it darker again, but you do want to bring that lighter red out. And be committed to your line here. So when you start one, try to continue it all the way through your flower. Okay? I'm going to go down to these other red ones here. Just like so. Nice. That pure white really makes it pop is good. That is exactly what we want it to do. And if you want more white in there, just get some more white on your brush. And just like so. See how much more interesting that looks. And we'll, we'll go back in here in a moment. So let's take our smaller brush that we just used for the green stems, clean that off. Let's go to these smaller red ones and do the same thing we did for the bigger red ones. Just go back in there, get some of that. I'm just taking my pure white because a lot of this red is still wet. And I'm just going in there. I'm going to take some of my red as well too. And just go back in there. Just like so. Do that to the blue ones in a moment here. Let's rinse out this small brush. And let's do the smaller white ones here. Get some of your white, a little bit of your blue. And move in there with your white and blue. And these will start looking more like flowers. The more you get those petals defined, you'll see them spreading out and get a finer tip. There we go. Now, let's take our medium chisel brush. Once again, clean that out. Back to the white, some blue. Let's address these bigger blue ones. And these are my favorite ones on this composition because I can do the individual petals here. It's one of my favorite pieces to paint. There we go. Yeah, see how that how that's starting to look? That blue. And we'll go back in there with some of our dark blue. So now let's take some of our dark blue. Let's go back into these. Lay in some of that dark blue on top. There we go, just to give that shape a bit more. See what I mean? Let me work back with a little bit of, so I'm just taking my pure blue, moving back in there to get some of those petals a bit more defined, okay? Yeah, that's looking good. So now let's address the stems again because you can't really see them on camera yet. So. Let's take our white, and we're going to take our small, our smallest brush, our white and our green, 
more white than green. And we're going to go back in here. See, now you can start to see it. Yes. See how much that green with the white just pops out. We're just going to address these stems. And I'm just starting off with them at very thin lines. And if I want to get thicker, I do. Like I said, they aren't necessarily touching our plants. And I'm just doing squiggly lines, very loose, trying to lift up with my brush as I'm laying them down. And that white really makes that green pop very well. That's pretty typical for green. You don't really start to see it. Until you add some of that white. Let me get this leaf over here. Just think organic shapes. Organic shapes are very curved. And I want to make some of these green lines a bit thinner. So all I'm going to do is simply find areas that I want to put thinner shapes in. Just like so. See? See how much more interesting that looks with that green and black black there, opposing itself to that black background. So to make these blue flowers pop out even more, we're going to take our yellow now, put this onto our palette. That yellow is very runny, so do be careful when you pour this paint out. Some of the paint's consistencies are different than others. So we're going to take just our pure yellow, and we're going to take some of our white, and we're going to do the buds or like the surrounding areas of our blue flower. So just go to the bottom there, look over white and yellow, and we're just making little stems that are connecting there. And if you find that green gets in there, just rinse out your brush and get some of your pure yellow with some of that white. And that'll really make it pop. So we're just going to go back in here and I'm going to make some stems that are connecting to these here. Just like so. Get some of that yellow, some of my white, and I'm going to draw a yellow stem that's just peeking through, reaching up and out through there. And I'm going to do some indications of some leaves there. I'm going to do one that's extending through these red ones. Some of my yellow, some of my white. a whole mishmash of yellows and greens in there. I'm going to rinse out my small brush again, get some of my green, some of my white, and just start going back and giving some of these green stems some leaves. All right, now Going back to my medium chisel brush, I'm going to get some of my pure white and go into these bigger red flowers here. Once again, so take my pure white on my medium brush. And I'm just going to go back in here and add some of that pure white onto my flowers here. So I want that white to even shine through even more in the center there. If you have any questions on technique here, please let me know. I'm just using this pure white to really make them accent and pop out that red 
some of more of that pure red. And now we're going to blow dry the whole thing here because we need to do the center of this, but might as well blow dry the whole thing. Now for the center of this large flower in the middle here, we're going to rinse out our medium chisel brush. And this is going to be a mix of pure blue and white. And we're just going to get load our brush up with some pure blue and white. And we're just going to go in the center here. And if you want it darker, and get rid of some of your white. And just put some of that bl darker blue in there. That'll be the center of your flower. And I'll show you here in a moment. It's not as dark as I'd like, so I think I'm just going to have to blow dry it here. But actually, I think that looks, looks like working out pretty well. Yeah, so there we go. There's the center. So now, I think to add a bit more definition to our stems, I'm going to take some of my pure white and my small fine tip brush. And I'm just going to go back in here and do some white highlights. This is a very abstract interpretation of Mother Nature. And I think another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to get some of my black and I'm going to, I know this isn't on the original and if you don't want to do this then feel free not to, to do not what I'm doing. But I want to get some of that black and I want to define some of these petals here. So just a little bit of black just to see some division in my petals here. Just a little bit will go a long way to show the audience, our viewers, of our painting where you want their eyes to look. But again, this isn't necessary if you don't want to do that, but I do just to indicate these a bit more. And there we have it. A very lively spring colored flower arrangement. And this will be the last one we're doing for this month. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. The last thing that we're going to do is get our small brush and sign this in the corner here. Just like so. Just my initials, because my name is Cipriano Ortega, and that's quite a long name to fill. So, I thank you once again very much for joining me this evening in painting, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. I'll stay on here for a few minutes if you have any questions, but um, I'll be seeing you next time, hopefully. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.